Hey, welcome back. We've been talking about our forces unit in a physics course, and this is also a good foundation for an AP physics course as well. And I wanted to give a quick static friction example problem. And what's this problem going to be about? It's going to be about my cats and a heavy box of kitty litter because I was looking around my house for something to do a static friction problem about that was pretty heavy. If you've ever picked up one of these boxes, you know they're pretty heavy. And so let's get to it. Here's our problem. The box kitty litter has a mass of 18.1 kilograms. Let's say my wife gives it a horizontal push with her leg with a force of 35 newtons. The question is, will she move the box if the coefficient of static friction between the cardboard and the carpet is 0 0.250? What will be the static friction force that is exerted on the box? All right, and at this point I want to say, if you have no idea how to proceed or what's going on, you might want to watch that screencast that I've done on static friction, but one of the first strategies we're going to do is to separate out into the x-axis and y-axis and start translating the word problem information into more concise information in terms of variables. So one of the first things we know is that the mass is 18.1 kilograms, and that doesn't go in the x or the y. So we're going to put it kind of in a middle of the road column that we can make at the end. Okay, and we do know our force applied is 35 newtons. Our static friction force maximum, we don't know off the top of our heads. We do know our coefficient of static friction. This value down here is given in the problem. And our acceleration, the x. Let's think about that. Do we know what that is? For some problems, the answer is yes, but for this problem, the answer is no. At the outset of this problem, we don't know if there is an acceleration or not. We don't know if it's zero or not, honestly. So we're just going to leave it as an unknown question mark here. Let's think about the y-axis. Do we know our force due to gravity? The answer is no, but that's pretty easy to find, right? We do know our mass, so we can find that. Do we know our normal force? The answer is no for now. We don't know what our normal force is. How about our acceleration of the y? The acceleration of the y we do know. What is the acceleration of the y for this problem? I'll give you a hint. It is not 9.81 meters per second squared. And the answer is the acceleration of the y is zero. Why is that? Because the box of kitty litter is not magically flying up in the air at an accelerating rate or down into the ground at an accelerating rate. It's just sitting on the ground. So that acceleration of y is zero. We can change that to be zero. All right, and just a quick recap of our strategies that we're going to be working with for complex horizontal forces problems. We're going to write what the problem gives you in terms of the variables and the x and y axis separated out. We draw our free body diagram. We've already done number one and number two for this problem. Then we're going to solve for components and whatever else we can. Start with things that are like obvious that we can solve for at the beginning of the problem. This problem has no components. This problem has no vector at an angle to break down into x and y components. So in that sense, it's a little easier. Then we use the sum of the forces strategy in the x and the y. And then we bring those together with the friction equation because the friction equation is special in the way that it has something in the x and something in the y. All right, so we have our known values, and one quick thing that we can solve for is our force due to gravity, right? We don't know what our force due to gravity is, but we do know what our mass is, and we do know what gravitational acceleration is. So we can just plug in our numbers and get our force due to gravity. That's helpful, and we will update our known information up at the top. And then we're ready to move on and use the sum of the forces strategy. So the first line in the sum of the forces is literally the sum of the forces. Like you add up the forces in that axis and see what happens. Our FA is positive because it's to the right. Our FS is negative because it's going to be to the left. And the second line for the sum of the forces strategy is just Newton's second law. The sum of the forces are equal to mass times acceleration in that axis. So then we set those equal to each other and we see what happens. Now at this point, there are two unknowns. We don't know what our acceleration in the x is. It could be something or it could be nothing, actually. We do know our fa. We don't know our fs. We have two unknowns, so we're kind of stuck. But we just take it step by step by step and we're going to be fine. I'm going to label this as equation 1 so we can come back to equation 1 and you'll know what I'm talking about. Our next step is going to be to do the same thing in the y-axis, the sum of the forces strategy. So we say the sum of the forces in the y is equal to fn plus the negative fg because we are literally adding up the sum of the forces in the y-axis. The second line for the strat is just use Newton's second law in that axis. And then we set those things equal to each other. And we think about, well, is our acceleration in this plane zero? So what do you think? Is our acceleration in the y zero? Yep, we already discussed this. It is. 
and we want to solve for our fn. So we're going to go ahead and simplify the equation. We know fn is equal to fg in terms of magnitude, not in terms of direction, but our fn value turns out to be 176 newtons. So we're going to update our information in a very logical way so that we can keep track of everything that's going on and be organized so we can just destroy this problem and get it correct. And our last strategy is going to be to bring it all together with the friction equation because the friction equation will address things in the x-axis and the y. And let me show you what I'm talking about. This fs is in the x-axis, this fn is in the y-axis. So it's very rare to get an equation that does both. But we're going to solve for our maximum static friction we go ahead and plug in our numbers and we get our answer there that's for the maximum static friction all right let's go back and update our numbers first and then we should go back and address the question and think about what this answer is going to mean so it says will she move the box if the coefficient of static friction between the cardboard and the carpet is 0 0.250 so will she move this box what do you think look at what we know and come up with an answer right now please and the answer is no. Why is the answer no? Well, her force applied is 35, and the maximum static friction that can work in the opposite direction of motion is 44. 35 is not bigger than 44. So this push with her leg, like kick or whatever we want to call it, is not going to accelerate this thing. It's not strong enough to. So the answer is no, she will not move the box. All right, let's take a look at the follow-up question. What will be the static friction force that is exerted on the box? And this is really crucial. I want you to honestly take a moment to stop what you're doing and think about what you think the answer is going to be here because you may get this wrong and this is a really crucial point for this lesson. Okay, the static friction force that will be exerted by the box is not going to be 44, it's going to be 35. Why is that? Because the forward force was 35, the backwards force can be no more than that, and it does have a maximum of 44, but it's not going to get up to that level because we don't have a frictional force that's going to be greater than the applied force. If that were the case, we would live in a nonsensical universe. Every time someone tried to move something and failed, it would accelerate backwards. That would just be insane. That would no longer make logical sense. And that's not the universe that we live in. So the answer is going to be 35. The frictional force is not going to be greater than the force that it experiences to move it in the opposite direction. All right, so hopefully this has been helpful. I'm going to be doing more lessons in this unit of forces in physics as well as other topics as well. If you have any questions or any comments, please throw them down below, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.